Uh, Dave is design principal for HMC Architects. Uh, Dave works right here in San Diego. Uh, he's an award-winning architectural designer with more than 25 years experience uh, all over the world. His design portfolio spans a broad spectrum of project types with uh, specific expertise in designing educational environments and complex international projects. Uh, his recent work at HMC includes design at UCSD and their new School of Management. Uh, many of you may have seen that building across from the Salk Institute uh, this morning, as well as at UC Irvine and their Center for Real Estate uh, in the School of Business there. So with that, Dave Rowland. Thank you so much. I think this is such a great topic for us and, and for this, uh, uh, this leadership group, really, to be talking about innovation and the next steps and looking at our practice as we, we've gone through it from, I mean, my father's an architect. My uncle's an architect. I mean, I've seen them practice. I've seen them practice through the years. I'm now in the profession. I've been a professor for a long time, working for a variety of different firms. And we need to be able to watch ourselves from, from the, the situations that we, we understood and grew up and the situations that we're set up with today. And what I'm going to speak about is really just one, one perspective, a perspective that we're looking at right now. And it's, it's about virtual reality and, and how we look at design from, uh, from how we actually positioned ourselves before how we may position ourselves today, and how we may position ourselves in the future. Um, and in that, I'll just give a, a, a brief introduction of, of really what we've been doing, as well as what's happening up at Cal IT Squared. Some, some of you had a, um, the opportunity this morning to walk through the Cal IT Squared building and look at the Star Cave and the Next Cave and some of the other environments, virtual environments and, and design environments that they have over there, also experiencing what they're uh, experimenting with uh, when it comes down to sound, acoustics, and, and uh, just the, the reality state that we can get ourselves in. I'm going to look at the design, um, just basic design. I'm going to look at science, uh, virtual reality, and then some of the applications that we're seeing, we're finding, and, and, and they keep on growing. It's sort of the what ifs that, that come out there, and then show you a couple of case studies that I'll run through really quickly of some of the uh, uh, pieces that we've used out there on the, on the Star Cave. And again, design, as we know it, we were taught, you know, it's something that's really an integrated process, it's something that we, we sit down, not only in our teams, but we, we invite in other, other perspectives, our clients' perspectives, some of the other stakeholders, and then we really try to discover what those, uh, um, sort of what, what those next steps would be, some opportunities, some, uh, some solutions maybe at that time, at that point of time. And those things will change depending on how we walk through that, how that process is set up, um, all of our next steps. I mean, we've done it. Through the years, we've done our little sketch pads, our little you know, journals. You know, we've gone into different type of CAD operations. And, and, uh, um, um, and you, you've all done the pin bar probably in this room. I mean, I know that I have. And, and all these different uh, menus that are out there. Now we're on you know, finger sketching on the iPad and, and all these different things. But we're finding ourselves with maybe easy ways to present. But is our design thinking really changing in this? Are we really you know, hand to paper? Is it, uh, is it the models that we're building? You know, what's really giving us that other level of inspiration and making us uh, try to look at these environments and these spaces in a different way? One thing that we've had the opportunity to, ha to do here in San Diego is hook up with um, uh, the uh, uh, Neuroscience Institute that's here in the organization, ANFA. And in that, we've really been able to get into another, another level of dialogue when it comes down to how the human body, how the human spirit and all this responds to environments, responds to design, and especially in the built environment itself. Um, ANFA is a, a great group here. They've got a, a wonderful organization, and we're talking to people that are uh, much brighter than we are. But we get into that discussion of, of how we really interact and, and sort of that um, subconscious and, and conscious uh, responses to environments and spaces. Again, what we design in architecture, you know, all these different environments from healthcare to educational environments, to just living environments, all of these do have and do take a different, um, a different perspective to them. You can't just go on in. What we're finding a lot in our international practice right now is we, we go into a healthcare environment, and it actually is an office environment, that we shoehorn in a program that, that many people just shoehorn in uh, uh, an OR into something that could have been a conference room. You know, we really need to think about how these environments are designed. Uh, in that as well, our perception, our experiences, all those things are brought on into it. And, and if we limit that to just our designers or just our architects, I think we've also brought a limitation to what that could be. And I think that uh, um, the people at IDEO, I think were mentioned a little bit earlier by, by Lisa, they have a great, a great process of design thinking where you bring in 
just multiple perspectives into the room. And in that, you're really able to discover something much different than you were able to on your own. Now, virtual reality itself, when you really get down to it, you know, it's something where, where there's a bit of a distance to it. But how do you get yourself into this type of environment? I think what people saw this morning at Cal IT Squared is one way um, uh, to, to really uh, look at it in, in, in a different perspective. There's a lot of different tools that are out there. I think we, some of you may have used some of these, um, uh, but, but there's many that are out there, telepresence and digital theater. We also a way of communication and design itself, just, just in its own term of discovery, uh, is really a, a communication tool. So this is one way to be able to talk over ideas, show each other ideas, but th there's a distance that really happens in that. Um, we also have uh, Cinegrids, which are vector programs, and, and this can be a, just a large screen where we're looking at a, a variety of different ideas that are out there. This can be full scale, it can be, as you can see, exploded scales, um, but there are ideas that, uh, that can be brought out at a, at a much more vibrant and, and multiple scaled um, um, uh, environment. The Sage is a scalable, uh, adaptable graphic environment. We saw, actually, I don't think they had it operating this morning, but in the Sage, you can have multiple platforms running at the same time. You know, you can be having 50,000 different conversations going on. If anyone's watched Hawaii Five-0, it's kind of fun to watch on the TV show these guys trying to solve mysteries and murder, you know, and they have a, they have a sage environment there. But in this, you can, have, uh, you can have a Skype running, you can have a webinar, you can have, you know, your documents and your sketchbook running all at the same time, and everyone's able to see this. Now, when you start to take this and you start to bend it a little bit, now all of a sudden the, the uh, perspective starts to change. You know, this is a, a Varier 3D, which is an environment, a 3D environment really that you do without glasses. Um, um, they're working on this right now. I think we saw them try to explain why they're not using it today and this morning, and it's because of the 3D, um, uh, the 3D environment and different perspectives that you get um, with new tools and, and uh, pieces that are out there in the industry. These things, again, you start to become a little bit more immersed, but you're really not walking into it yet. The Reeve now really becomes something where you're, you're starting to um, uh, dive into that industry a little bit further. You're diving into something that, that really you're, you're able to come in and out of the parts and pieces. Um, it really is a 3D. It's something that, that engulfs you, but at the same time is more of a flat screen. And this is one uh, environment that's over at Cal IT Squared right now, which is the next cave. Uh, this is one, one step down from a fully immersed environment, but the next cave really gives you a, a three-dimensional viewpoint. Um, it's a bunch of different screens that are really trying to surround you. It's scalable, so you could make this thing almost encase you if you wanted to. Uh, pretty much, as they explained this morning, um, off-the-shelf parts. You can go to Best Buy if you want to and, and build yourself one of these, but I think it's in the programming. But again, when it comes on down to it, it's really in your perspective, and not just your visual perspective. You can bring clients inside these environments. You can walk them through something that we believe we're explaining and communicating really clearly, but in many cases, they really, they're really ideas. We see space differently. Some of us do, actually all of us do, in, in, some, other, in some other way. So when we're bringing a client in, 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 or, or designing something throughout our team, just adding that next level of perspective is, is really important. This, again, adds to that level of discussion. Then you get down to um, uh, an environment like the, the Star Cave, which really is a fully, uh, fully immersed environment. I don't think I can get here. This is something where you'll be enclosed within this, um, uh, within this environment and be able to really test, you really be able to test things out. Now you're inside of this and you're able to, to see yourself at full scale you're able to, uh, your, your movement is, is also tracked in here. Um, you're able to control it by uh, little toggles and whatever, but, um, but in this, it's your perspective in the group that's within uh, the Star Cave with you. This was uh, an event that we did at Mobius up in LA a couple years ago, and what we did was we actually built the Mobius form, floated it above LA, and we just walked around it. And we have LA's through all these little slots, the city of LA is, is down below us, and we were just trying to prove that, you know, you, you, it really is an endless, you know, perspective that you can take. You can get yourself floating in, in, in midair, you can take yourself right into your building, right into the environment, sitting right there at a nurse's station, or take yourself up on Mars, just depending on the information that you can uh, take in there. 
And if you could see down in the lower part of the screen, it, it, uh, I think it will tell you on the next screen too. Really, in this, in this star cave, these are the pieces and parts that, that you're talking about. You know, it's not a lot of, uh, we'll call them technology that's within there. That, these are things that are right off the shelf. But what you're doing is now you're, you're getting these all to sync, you're getting these all to communicate. And when you're standing inside of this environment, you truly do feel that you are, it's as close to real as you can get these days. Uh, the virtual environment is getting tighter and tighter. Now applications, what they're using right now and what they're doing in the future, you're actually able to track your eye. So for wayfinding, for a variety of different uh, uh, sort of uh, cognitive studies, they're able to, to now track what you're doing, what you're thinking. If you're walking down a corridor and you're hooked up to this, as you can see in the upper right, um, they'll actually know where your eyes are moving. They'll know if you're recognizing the red door versus the blue door. Where They'll give you a path to be able to walk. And in that walking path, They'll, they'll time you, and when you actually recognize that destination or that goal, then all of a sudden it clicks in, the computer runs it, and, and lets you know that your design or your wayfinding of the design is actually becoming more successful by just changing parameters. So we're able to walk through the, the spaces and the environments that we're designing, and in that, I guess, test to fit or, or a shift if we want to. The tools are, as you saw before, the full cone, of, of uh, parts and pieces hooking up to your brain, um, and the tools are getting much more simple. And actually, they're, they're becoming wireless. They're becoming, and actually, they're, they're looking pretty cool. You look like a, a surfer here in San Diego. Um, this, this, on, this on the right was walking through the uh, Cal IT squared building and uh, was one of the wayfinding tests. So we, uh, it wasn't we, but uh, Eve uh, Edelstein, a neuroscientist, had done the study through her research a Latrobe grant to, uh, to look at the wayfinder, to, to look at uh, setting everybody else up, or uh, this, this group of uh, individuals up with a path, and have them walk through it. They've already walked through the actual environment, the building, and then all of a sudden get into the room, get in the virtual environment, and say, could you find yourself over to classroom number six? Could you find the black box theater? You know, can you make your way out of the building? And they would walk through this, and you'd find that spot in there through through whatever, that spot where they're kind of stuck. Then all of a sudden they would start changing the parameters. They'd, they'd uh, put some striping on the floor, change the window patterns, you know, change other things, and you could start to see how people, their memory and uh, sort of recognition would, uh, would play into this. Um, academic applications of, of the Star Cave are actually just, they're, they're just touching them right now, but they're, they're endless. I mean, we're talking about the, the mock-up rooms that you get in study in, in healthcare as well as education. You, uh, they're looking right now at, at setting up uh, scenarios where you're in the virtual environment and you're actually going to be able to test you know, people within this environment. You wouldn't have to have these tables here in the patients. You'd be standing in there and be able to respond directly to what's going on, how your, uh, your timing of that. Um, they're, they're using these in, in, in healthcare right now. Um, where we're, they're training nurses, you know, in their movement through the hospitals. They're training uh, people to understand um, how, uh, how they're connecting up with the next, um, uh, the next environment, where their path is, you know, your, your, your system, your, um, uh, your next steps of, of the event that, that you're a part of, um, how you're going to be able to move from one point to another. Um, but in this, you really start looking at, at how um, how these opportunities start to start to really um, move to the next step. You know, once you're in a virtual environment, you're able to not only um, uh, create another level of perspective, but you're able to also gather a different level of data. And the data is something that really is uh, is important right now to um, to the future of the design of this. This is uh, this is uh, Jurgen. I think some people met Jurgen this morning. He's actually walking through a proton bank. Um, that's been gathered data in, at the university, and in this, he's able to go on and manipulate, walk through, find different strands, and whatever these scientists need to, <laughs> to be able to figure out. But, but uh, it, it's it's very very interesting when you're actually going inside of a, a DNA strand and you're able to uh, to look at a, a, a cancer cell that's over here or or something that just isn't quite working out. And these are all coming from um, these are all coming from scientific formulas. These are, these are all, it's all data that's being collected. So 
um, in the research department. We've got a lot of different people coming into the Star Cave right now and, and uh, uh, testing and studying. Uh, as well, uh, I think it was last year, they gathered all the data from, uh, from Mars, from the lunar rover, and people that had the opportunity to go in the Star Cave could put on the helmet and uh, drive through the Mars environment. Uh, so they're using this as well to, uh, to study different levels of space, uh, different environments that we haven't even come close to. Uh, in the geology department as well, they're actually go through strata you know, of the Earth, and you could find yourself down you know, hundreds of years into the soil just by different camera lenses. Architecturally, which is really what uh, many of us are in, there's so many different applications of this as well. And like I said, I think it, it's about the perspective that you bring to it. So when we're designing, you know, uh, how many different layers and how many different, uh, uh, I'll even just call them visual angles, can we, can we bring to, uh, to what we do? You know, you really have to think of the possibilities. We have brought this out where, where our design team hasn't been able to go to a site in some country, but we've got uh, full panoramic video of it. So we're able to go into the Star Cave, uh, walk around a place in Mumbai or uh, Lima, Peru, and walk around this and feel like you're actually within that environment. You can actually take the sound within that environment. And again, it is virtual, but it's about as close as you can get than spending the $15,000 ticket to go round trip. So we've been able to at least start studies, start designs, be able to uh, respond to our client when they're talking about a specific part and piece. Possibilities are pretty, pretty uh, limitless on, on the layers that we, can, that we can go with this. As well, they're developing a, uh, a software. We're actually a part of developing the software called CaveCAD. Now, this would, this would take it to the next step because right now, when we design something, we're designing it in a format that we typically would design, like a SketchUp or a, uh, uh, any other 3D one, and Revit as well. We're able to take that, that model that we have, bring it over to the cave, insert it in within a uh, day's time, it's up and running, we're loaded, we can go into the environment and start to manipulate and, and have fun, but we can't change that environment. We can't go in there, take a wall and move it, remove a roof, change a material. CaveCAD was being developed, or is developed, um, so that we can do that, but we have to build it with CaveCAD. So we now can't build with uh, SketchUp or Revit, and the next study of the software that we're involved with is actually to do an, uh, I call it translation of a SketchUp model into a CaveCAD type software so that now we can go on in, take our models that we're all used to building and go into this environment and be able to shift, talk. I think people saw today, we went into the Barcelona Pavilion. So we were standing on top of the, the nice mound and we were in the Barcelona Pavilion and uh, uh, he removed the roof. The sun was nice, kind of sunset, sunrise. Uh, I asked him to change the wall to fur. He couldn't do it, but uh, it was at least a good shot. But we're working with these tools, and, and the development is using it, is trying to take this to uh, using the, the tools that we use today and basically adapting them to the next step. And these are live right now, so these are, these are tools that we can use uh, that are out in the market, or that will be out in the marketplace that UCSD is developing. This is just one of the uh, case studies that, that we went through. I'll try to run through this real quick. This was um, uh, up in San Francisco, uh, one of the libraries. And in this, in this, this was actually, the design was, was moving forward, but it was changing rapidly. Uh, this was an addition to an existing library. And uh, they actually were going to change around the whole campus uh, um, sort of movement and circulation because they were going to change the whole entrance to this library. And in that, we really didn't know how, how this was going to work. So we went to the campus, you know, documented everybody's movement, and then we put, brought this into the cave, and we started to look at how this would really, how we could set up that stage, how we could set up how to enter into this environment. But we would test this in our SketchUp models, we'd test this in our, our sketches and our physical models. So we would go through the environment and we'd look at this, but we were, again, it was a single perspective. Even though there were multiple in there, it was really a single perspective. We couldn't, we couldn't really get into that space. And our clients as well were seeing this and they were trusting us as architects and designers on, on what we were saying. You know, this is going to be beautiful, this atrium is going to fill with light. But when we got to the point of of bringing them into the cave and showing them this, even recording it and bring it back. When we brought them into the Star Cave, another level of ownership you know, came to board from all the stakeholders that were involved with the project. They really understood how you could walk through the space, um, how things, 
how things felt to them, not just how they looked. You know, you could, you could take a walk up the stairs. You can um, change the material, as, as in that we were changing textures. Uh, the light quality, we were changing the time of day. This is very much specific, same way that a Google would be. I mean, you're, you're hooked up in SketchUp. You can hook up a time of day, a location, um, total GPS um, a scenario. We were able to go on in here and, again, bring the client to another level of understanding which we thought was really the critical part. We think we know what we're doing when we're designing, you know, and a lot of it is test to fit, and a lot of it is just this is, you have a really great feeling and a, a, a strong conviction on how this is, but when you're actually sitting there with a client and they're telling you their ideas, and you're inside of this, and they're saying, I really wasn't thinking that that's how I would move through it. I was actually looking, I was going to, you know, move a little bit, and the students really come from this direction. You're really able to, to, to see this in here, and they, they bring their perspective up to, you know, in a way what yours is. It's a real perspective um, where they're able to walk through these spaces and they're able to really uh, um, get a piece and be a, be a part of that design. So true integration is something, you know, that we, we talk about, but at the same time is something that, you know, in an in, uh, in immersed environment or even in Next Cave or any other virtual environment, you're able to bring somebody up to that next level. At Mount Sac, uh, the client was having a real tough time with the small c computer screens and the small sketch-ups that we were walking through when it came down to just the massing of the building and the understanding of how the different kit of parts worked uh, within this. In the same way, we brought them into the dialogue inside of the, next, inside of the uh, Star Cave and started to talk about you know, th that kit of parts, you know, just the general programming kit of parts. We were able to walk them through the spaces, tell them how this connection of the library portion versus the cafeteria were to work, we were able to take them um, from a perspective of a person uh, dealing with the maintenance, from the delivery you know, of the cafeteria. We were able to take them from a student perspective, um, walking through the different zones that a student may come to uh, within this, what we call student center in a way. Um, the different views, the different access, the different openness. Now we're not just describing it, we're actually with the client standing inside of the space and they're able to experience it. Again, in these platforms that we were bringing, and these are SketchUp or Revit's, um, we weren't, at this point, CaveCAD was not developed, so we were not able to um, go on in and manipulate and, and change spaces and design live, what we'll call it, which is really what I think the next step value is. That's the next piece that, that is really important for us, or that we feel, at least at HMC, is something that we really want to be able to design to. We want to be able to experience it with our clients, or experience it with our design teams, or the other stakeholders on that, really develop a level of design thinking that's more live than bring in, bring out, print, you know, as, as we go through on, uh, I'll call it traditional, but pretty much today's, today's rules. In this case as well with wayfinding, we brought uh, the neuroscientist, you know, Eve Edelston, uh, uh, into the cave with us and had her, she's also an architect, had her start to give her impressions and her thoughts about how people move through this space and what, what, uh, what she was seeing with the different volumes and the different you know, masses and, and how maybe a, a play of color would help to you know, draw somebody over here. She became part of our design team. Um, she was at that time a member of, our, uh, of HMC and now she, she's a consultant um, working on grants at UCSD and we still use her on on pieces and parts of our research. David? She's a neuroscientist, neuroscientist. an architect as well. Um, now the Rady School of Management is, is what uh, it was mentioned a little bit earlier. This was, uh, uh, it's actually under construction right now in phase two. Phase one was built right at the time that the Star Cave was, uh, was open. So we're talking four or five years ago that the Star Cave was really uh, coming online and phase one was already completed. As it was completed, um, phase two, we were designing phase two. In the design of phase two, we thought it was really critical for us, now that the client had experienced those spaces that we had designed, now when we were completing this, this facility, creating the last leg, we'll call it, of the three legs, and, and, and enclosing in a courtyard, we wanted the client to really understand what those next moves were. You know, um, as all clients are interested, what are you gonna do to kind of finish this off? We were now bringing them inside the courtyard. We were bringing them outside on the prowl, walking them to the areas they knew and they could feel every day they, they live in this place, and then being able to say in the Star Cave, and look at what phase two is going to do for you. You know, remember that we're standing on the bridge, look at, let's walk across this bridge. 
How does that open up? This is where the ocean is, remember? This is where your, this is where your office is. This is where you're bringing your clientele base in the executive uh, conference room. This is where your behavioral lab is. And we're able to walk through these spaces. We're able to, in this case, you know, let's take the elevator. You know, let's, let's move up. And it was, it was pretty fluid, even though I'm the one running this right now. I'm, I'm not a gamer, so I'm pretty jerky with it. But you, you know, it's, it's something that, again, the perspective, now they're really understanding what this design is. And, and um, I'm not to put any level of, of, uh, of real difference between a client and the architect, but the bottom line is to get the same ownership, the same idea, the same understanding, the same language. And in that, that's really what we were trying to achieve. And that's what we found within the immersed environment as well as the next cave we're able to do. Uh, right now, uh, this project is uh, the School of Management uh, should be completed in March and open in May. And uh, everybody's very excited. And I think the client is even more excited that they were part of this process than they are about the building completed. So they're out there um, with these videos, you know, really showing people how they were now part of that, uh, that discovery. This was actually the first project as well that UCSD had used um, in the design process through the BAC um, and their design, uh, their design committee, uh, design review committee, uh, to be able to look at a project prior to it being constructed. Let's see if I can get that off here. Uh, those, are, uh, that, those are just some of the examples we, we, we've actually worked with in the, the Star Cave more. We've been focusing uh, more in the last year on the uh, software development, which I think is the, really the critical next step. Because in a way, right now, it's a presentation tool for us. It's, it's, it's not as much of an exploration other than through the client. Um, but from a design perspective, it's something that when we're able to bring in multiple layers of, uh, of, uh, of, of design and design thought, into this star cave and be able to work within that, it's, it's really going to be the next step. So I would just, uh, if anything, I would just uh, invite people to uh, make a call over to Cal IT Squared. Uh, this is one of the very few environments in the world at this level, and they have all the different levels of scalable environment um, that are just down the, down the block, if you want to call it, in, in a very great environment. So that's all I have. Any questions out there?